Hi, and welcome to Finding Your Way Through Therapy. The goal of this podcast is to demystify therapy, what can happen in therapy, and the wide array of conversations you can have in and about therapy. Through personal experiences, guests will talk about therapy, their experiences with it, and how psychology and therapy are present in many places in their lives. With lots of authenticity and a touch of humor, here is your host, Steve Bisson. Je veux des applaudissements. I want people to applaud me now after this intro. And welcome to episode 137 of Finding Your Way Through Therapy. If you haven't listened to episode 136, go back and listen. It's the third episode with the mental men and uh, then the Sweeney, Andrew Kang, Robert Trini, Patrick Rice, uh, all regulars on here. So I hope you enjoy that. But uh, today's um, episode is with Amita Sharma. Amita Sharma is a co-founder of Norstock, a global holistic wellness platform for peri to postmenopausal women. Amita is on a mission to bring affordable wellness to every woman in the world and has designed with Norstock evidence-based and cultural sensitive holistic programs for women, wellness, self-care, and preservation. One of the things that I'm hoping, you know, we will talk about is in general how that feels for people because it is a, it's one of those things we never talk about, right? We don't talk about miscarriages. We don't talk about perimenopause. We don't talk about postmenopause and how that affects women and how it impacts different things. So I hope we get to that. And here's the interview. Well, hi, everyone, and welcome to episode 137. I am excited because what, you know, I like to connect through social media and people I don't know. And you know about finding your way through therapy is all about going into those situations where you don't know something and, you know, being a dude and not knowing so much about, uh, you know, uh, menopause and perimenopause and stuff like that. And Amita Sharma uh, reached out to me and said, hey, Steve, Let's have a conversation about this. And I'm like, well, let's record that conversation, no less. So, Amita Sharma, welcome to Finding Your Way Through Therapy. Thank you. I, I, I'm super psyched, Steve, for you to say, yes, I'm going to talk to you. So thank you so much. You, you know, I, I, I think that that's one of the things about finding your way through therapy that I find interesting in, in my podcasting. I'm comfortable with first responders. I'm comfortable with trauma. And the things that I don't feel comfortable with, bring them on. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I had someone who was talking about Israel and the difficulties that happened there in October and the continued anti-Semitism. I bring up the first responders and suicide rates and stuff like that. And, you know, I just like to bring stuff that I don't know because I feel like if I don't know it, then my uh, audience doesn't know about it. Uh, But before we go into all that fun stuff. How about we get to know you, Amita? And you know, what's funny too is that I'll tell you, it's a little anecdote. I saw your name pop up and one of my uh, all-time favorite TV shows is a show called Numbers. One of the, the, the characters on the show is called Amita. And I'm like, this is a match made in heaven. I'm gonna like, I'm gonna like Amita <laughs> for sure. Uh, and I know it's a coincidence, obviously, but um, Amita, how about you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, I um, have been, um... My story is actually quite rock and roll in the sense I started as an architect, studied architecture, believe it or not. I believe you. (laughs) Worked in um, architecture, got into software, sold online furniture. And, uh, you know, at that time, nobody wanted to buy furniture. That's a different story. Um, (laughs) And then um, got into uh, technology, you know, internet, uh, e-commerce. That's what, uh, and and worked in corporate world, perimenopause. You know, that's how I discovered I'm 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 in perimenopause. And I was like, oh, my God, what's happening with me? And then here I am taking that uh, experience of mine and trying to empower women with Nourish Talk, where I started this company, co-founder of that, Holistic Wellness. Holistic Wellness, okay. Well, first of all, it's very believable. Um, I think I calculated I've had three or four people who were lawyers who became therapists or some sort of med- medical field person, personnel nowadays. Um, and I have uh, people who are first responders who turn to different things. So for me, nothing surprises me. I think we all learn from our own uh, situations. I mean, I used to work in a produce section in a a supermarket. So, hey, here we are, right? So, but I I think that it's great to know a little bit about where you came from. But one of the standard questions on finding your way through therapy is, have you ever been in therapy? Not really. Um, I think I have uh, done therapy on myself. 
So if you right. answer that question, not from someone else, but yes, I have um, kind of talked to myself. I've done CBT on myself. And if not professional therapy, but maybe with my friends, you know, uh, I have a, a very close set of friends. We talk to each other quite, um, uh, you know, frequently. Uh, so they talk about their problems. I talk about my problems. So I think if you want to call that therapy, yes. <laughs> I, I think we've all that. had that therapy. Absolutely. So that's so yes. The answer is yes and no. No professional therapy, but yes, friends therapy. Absolutely. And doing your own research, which is always very important. You know, one of the, the things that, you know, I, I don't know so much about perimenopause and menopause, uh, not because I don't, I know a little, a little bit, but, you know, being a dude, you don't get really educated on this. So that's why I was excited to have you on. I was wondering, why are you doing this at this time in your career and developing all this uh, stuff? Because I think it's a very important place to start, maybe. Yeah, so, you know, um, actually, you being a dude, uh, don't understand perimenopause, it's completely understandable, even as being a woman, not understanding perimenopause. Right. You know, that is also a fact. And that's why I'm doing it, because um, most of us women don't understand. We, we know menopause, menopause and puberty, this two uh, spectrum here. We don't understand fertility, you know, the reproduction when we have to give birth. But then after that, boom go down no nothing until we say oh old age chronic condition years between <laughs> is is like a mystery underserved under research not well understood but these are so important if you if we as society want to prevent uh, chronic conditions not only in women as well as in men guess what these are the years, the way our hormones were going up when we, because, you know, when we had the puberty at age 13 or whatever age, now is the time starting around 40, 10 years before a woman is hitting the menopause, the, the hormones are going to start going down. Right. And that's why it's so important as a society all over the world for us to understand and guess what is happening as our hormones are going down for women. We're talking about women here in this podcast. And the lack of the hormones in our body, if not taken care of during this period of time, can lead to chronic conditions, which is such a huge burden on our health care, trillions of dollars. Mm -hmm. That's why it is important. And honestly, I did not even know that this is a direct correlation. I just started doing it based on my personal um, you know, experience that no, not much support is there in corporate world. People don't want to talk about it. Women are ashamed. Women are saying, oh my God, I've gotten older, all those things. Uh, initially, right. I started thinking like that as well because society makes you think like that. And I said, oh, I should do something. The more I started digging into it, research and research, then I found these all correlations of all these things. And I said, oh my God, you know, we are like we are not even talking about it. We feel so scared to talk about it. So all the more reason of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Well, I, I, I think that, you know, you know, there, there is some research. I know a little bit about how the uh, autoimmune diseases and the beginning of perimenopause and menopause are sometimes related. And why is it that it affects more women than men? When you think about the autoimmune thing, I think it's like four out of five is women. And, you know, it's got to be related somewhere. I'm not educated as much as you are, but um, I, I certainly think that that's it. And why do women lose their, for lack of a better word, appeal? And I don't mean in a sexist way. I mean, yeah. oh, oh, now they're menopausal. Like, okay, well, they're, they're now no, no longer worthy of the attention. And uh, I think that that plays a factor. And you, you can let me know what you think, but that's a little bit of what I, I'm getting a little bit from what you're saying. Yeah, you know, no, absolutely. You know, uh, autoimmune disease is one of them. Heart disease, more women get heart, heart. disease than men. Uh, we don't even know this is a fact. And that's direct correlation of your hormones, your female sex hormones going down. Uh, your osteoporosis is directly related. Um, dementia, early dementia onset, because, you know, during the perimenopause time, women can get brain fog because of the hormone fluctuations. So that, if not uh, paid attention to, lead to dementia, cancer, diabetes. Right. These are the this is serious uh, chronic conditions which are burdening uh, our uh, healthcare system. But what happens during this phase is, and women don't understand this, that the female sex hormones start going down. 
right? They slightly start going down. Now, these hormones are very, very important. They control our mood. They control our all, all the functions. You know, our hair, or sometimes women's hair, they start getting thin and they start losing their hair. The skin starts sagging. It's all these hormones that start slightly start going down during 40s and then suddenly they go down when women hits a menopause. Now, the thing what women don't understand is most of us just, oh, this is age. This is going to happen to all the women. Yes, absolutely. But as a woman, you can proactively change your lifestyle, which we don't understand. And that's why I'm, we are trying to do is that women need to take charge of their destiny, of the health destiny during this period of time, which most of us don't even understand what to do. I think no, I don't understand what to do. And to cite some of my clients who have been through different issues, especially women, you know, if, if if men went through menopause or perimenopause, there would be about 17 different pills, 17 different treatments. And for women, it's like suck it up, buttercup. And, you know, the, the reproductive system, particularly of women and, you know, pre uh, perimenopause and post menopause, uh, we don't, we have like three solutions. And if you don't fall under those boxes, they get treated, you know, in a negative way. Uh, and I could be wrong, but I think that we do have also a medical system that doesn't empower women sometimes. I, I completely agree. The medical system, the gynecologists are not uh, taught in medical schools, the education part. It starts from them when we, uh, you know, when they are not taught in medical schools, they don't understand this phase of life. That's that's one of the things. The second thing is our system doesn't understand this phase of life. And that's why a couple of months back, Jill Biden has just uh, initiated a research on women's research during exactly this phase. The perimenopause phase, believe it or not, it's Good. so coincidental that it's just started that why women are getting more chronic conditions, a correlation of that. So that is just beginning to start. And so the society and the corporates also, you know, nobody talks about it. Everybody talks about pregnancy, reproduction, but nobody talks about the women phase of this part. The, the strange thing is, you know, what is what is scary is not scary, but alarming is that Almost 50% of the uh, workforce in America and United States is women over 45. Mm. Women over 45 right now are 50% of the workforce. And mm. and I don't know how many women actually are, are saying at the, um, I think now maybe it's beginning to happen, that they're perimenopausal and they need support. I just read an article last week um, uh, on Microsoft now beginning to, offer this this wellness uh, programs or wellness support for perimenopause of women because some of the women uh, started talking about it based on what's happening in UK. UK women have been very vocal about it. UK has been at least 10 years ahead of us as far as United States is concerned. Now women are talking about it. And so if women don't bring these issues out and open, and I think that's what is needed. More women have to talk about it. People like you, you know, do listening to it and promoting it, right? It, it it needs to be small steps, but that's kind of where we are all lacking. We just want women to be look beautiful all the rest of our lives. Women are beautiful at any age. Right. And it's not about menopausal, perimenopausal, in my opinion. Um, and, and, you know, the, yeah, and the feminist in me right away kicked in and said, uh, wait a minute, do they have to be beautiful? Do they have to be objects for me? But that's a whole different story for a different day, in my opinion. But uh, that's another part, too, is like women can be beautiful just like men can be beautiful. Um, and it's not about objectify, uh, object, objectification, but somehow women lose their appeal. And I think that that's the stuff that really, I think, affects a lot of women. Anyway, the ones I've worked with who feel like, you know, what's, you know, I'm less attractive, I'm less blankety blank, and then I'm less than it affects that it causes depression, causes anxiety, never mind the physical symptomology that you just talked about. But I think it affects women in other ways, too. Yes, women are more, ha more women have anxiety and depression during this phase of life than any other phase. And of course, postnatal depression is another one. After women give birth to babies, they also go through postnatal depression. And that's also because your hormones, suddenly you haven't had period, right? For the last uh, so many months or 
suddenly you're uh, again the hormonal imbalance is happening and that's the same reason the perimenopause the the the, the this phenomena is the same whenever right. you're going to have hormonal imbalance it's going to impact your brain then unfortunately during the perimenopause the physical attributes also change most of the women tend to gain weight you know you become a little bit more and especially around the abdomen and it's very hard to lose weight that is also a fact right. um you know and and then the hair part also goes thinning so you can imagine you know slightly being overweight the hair is going thinning and and the skin starts sagging and as a woman you know you you don't feel as attractive and that's where the anxiety depression it's a vicious it's a vicious cycle if you think about it yeah, and I think it's also misunderstood as to, you know, the overweight stuff. The hair thing, I mean, I, I have no sympathy for people losing their hair, obviously, as you can see my hair. Uh, but all <laughs> joking aside, you know, the overweight stuff, it, it's interesting because the working out, the eat, and it's seen as a uh, lack of control for women when they gain weight or what have you. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with shifting hormones, shifting everything, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, how do we help a society, well, maybe even just women for now, but I think society in general, how do we make them understand that this is not a, it's not a willingness, it's not a, like, it's none of that, it has to do with hormones. How do we explain that to people? Yeah, so that's why, you know, the education for them to understand what's going on in their bodies, it's so important. They should not just accept that they are going to put on weight and they're going to lose uh, hair and all those things that we talked about. There are solutions, there are holistic solutions, there is embracing a holistic lifestyle, changing your diet, getting your processed foods out of your diet, things like that, you know, changing your exercise routine, embracing things like uh, we were talking about essential oils just before our podcast, yeah. right? Uh, things like aromatherapy, things like, uh, you know, Ayurveda, daily lifestyle, your yoga, your meditation. There are so many tools women have. They just need to educate themselves, empower themselves. And unfortunately, a weight loss pill, yes, they, it could help you. But this morning, you know, there was a news about uh, all the weight loss pills could have side effects and they're coming out uh, talking about it now right so uh, so we are a pill popping society that you know we, we think oh one pill and now it's going to help me with uh, you know my hormones yeah hormone therapy is there but that doesn't mean you don't em embrace the holistic lifestyle right you, you can right. go you, you can get hormone therapy nobody's stopping you but if you don't embrace the holistic life then guess what it's the same thing's going to happen you're going to put on weight you're going to do all those things right i agree i so I, I think it's also realizing like you know in the mental health realm you know when I'm, a lot of people come in i'm like well I'm, I'm less depressed i'm taking my prozac or i'm feeling less uh scattered i'm taking my uh, adderall or what have you and I'm just giving two examples and I'm like, yeah, but you still got to change the way you think and you got to be able to connect with that. So pills is just part of it. And, you know, it, it, the American culture is about pills and solving things fast. When in mm -hmm. fact, when you think about perimenopause and any type of issue, frankly, I think it's time. I, be, I mean, that's part of the, my, the message I think you're also trying to, to give people, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I'm, you know, we have to nourish ourselves. Nourish, nourish meaning, uh, of course, the food. You have, the food is very important. Food is medicine. You have to put the right kind of food. You have to put, nourish your uh, right kind of thoughts. You have to nourish your exercise, movement, what we call it. I don't want to say exercise, movement, right. uh, nourishing your soul, you know, your brain, right? Uh, so all those things you have to nourish. If you feed the right ingredients in your body, no matter what age you are, you will be hopefully fine and not prone to all the things we're talking about, the bad things. Right. But we don't do that. And, and that's where we come. I'm trying to say is that self-care, self-love, nourishing yourself is so important during these years of women's life that uh, women don't understand that. Right. And I think the westernized culture also does not understand that the Eastern culture has been addressing this for about 3000 years and they might know something we don't. Um, I'm always uh, fascinated to have doctors who, and again, I'm not talking about, you know, uh, doctors that I, I per, like I do know personally, 
But, you know, like when I say, well, you know, what about acupuncture? Or what about working on movement rather than just giving them a pill or giving them surgery? And doctors are that are willing to accept that, that they're few and far between. Um, how do we get women, and you know, men, but because we're talking about women here, um, how do we get women to start like having that active conversation with doctors in regards to their own health? Yeah, so the Eastern culture you talked about, uh, you know, is definitely uh, has been around for 3000 years. Um, the traditional my Chinese medicine uh, has a acupuncture has a ton of research, uh, extremely helpful for women going through perimenopause, heart flashes. A lot of uh, data is there for acupuncture. Right. Um, so is uh, Ayurveda. Ayurveda is also very uh, Can you strong explain on... what that is? Ayurveda is basically a, a, a natural form of uh, science that's originated in India. Sort okay. of, uh, uh, um, it talks about food as medicine and it also talks about um, basically your constitution. Each person's constitution is unique and they provide, they talk about three different main constitution types. So the first step is which constitution are you as a, as a person? They, they talk about Vata, Pita, Kapha. Um, I don't want to have this whole thing on Ayurveda, but just on a, a very high level, based on what constitution you are, you should have the kind of food and the kind of exercises based on what your personalized constitution is. And it's all natural. It's all based on food. It's all based on um, movement. Yoga is a sister science of Ayurveda, just to give you an example. Meditation, okay. uh, breathing, then it, it uses a lot of medicated oils. So it talks a lot about, um, you know, massaging yourself, like nourishing yourself. And also it has uh, another um, uh, therapy called Panch Karma, five therapies, talks about cleansing, cleanse, internal cleansing and detoxification, what we call it here, juice cleansing. But this is a serious cleansing here. I was going to say, this is not like, I'm just going to drink juice for 48 hours and empty myself out. I just want to make sure we say that because we don't necessarily, I'm not endorsing anything here by any stress, but I certainly don't endorse that type of behavior. Um, because I think that's not the cleansing that most Eastern culture that has made sense to me anyway has ever talked about. But I think it's important. I want to, con I want to let you finish your idea on that cleansing. But I know you said, oh, I'm not here to talk about that. I think it's important that we bring this stuff up. I think that, you know, when women think that they're only limited to the two options that their male doctor gave them that they got mm -hmm. in 1972. And uh, <laughs> I mean, it, with all due respect to all the docs, I know, love you. But I mean, it's, it's willingness to talk about these things. So I think it's important when we talk about perimenopause to open women to different types of ideas mm -hmm. and suggestions. So please go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, absolutely. So women, uh, you know, we accumulate a lot of toxins. So do men. Uh, chronic inflammation builds oh, up in our You should see bodies. my toxicity. Ugh. Oh, really? Oh, my no, God. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> we all are, have toxins inside. You know, there's scary data that a newborn, when it's coming out, you know, they have so many toxins and that's coming from a mom's placenta, right? Um, right? I mean, so much uh, I read in science journals and that that's happening at the birth. Now you can imagine, you know, as we grow older, we have so many toxins that accumulated. So I think the first step is we need to make sure our cleanse, internal cleansing is, is important in our body. And that actually, if, if our gut health is in, uh, in good shape, our internal cleansing is in good shape, your skin is gonna be in just fine shape, right? Because right. your skin is nothing but a mirror reflection of what is going inside, not outside, or no matter how, what kind of expensive creams and all that kind of things that you do. So Ayurveda talks about, uh, to coming back to that, internal purification. It talks that about and has a very strong footing on, on on the punch karma therapies and um, the other therapies it talks about is a lot of what they call it like a massage, different type of massaging to, and for lack of a better word here in Western language. So they have this called abhyanga. It's like using medicated oils to massage the bodies and they think that the toxins kind of slowly start going away. And then there's another therapy, what they call it shirodhara. So you just lie on your head like that and the oil, the warm oil, trickles on your forehead like this. In fact, I got it done um, just a few weeks back. And believe it or not, the all kind of nasal uh, allergies, you were talking about your sinuses and all that. I'm telling you, it just, go, it just vaporizes up in thin air. You sleep like a baby. 
you're relaxed, your blood pressure goes down. It's called Shirodhara. And then they have all kinds of different therapies using medicated oils for osteo, uh, um, osteoporosis, arthritis, um, joint pain. You know, they, uh, what they use is medicated uh, herbs and they dip it in hot oil that, again, is medicated oil and kind of go in your body, like all the way, like that. So all these uh, tools are available to them to help, first of all, cleansing process of their internal cleansing process of their bodies so that all the toxins are washed away. Ayurveda is a big one. And then there are all kinds of herbs that are available. And I don't recommend anyone to start growing an herbal garden here inside. You know, you want to do it with, with, uh, with the knowledge and some expertise and, and have a consultation. But amazing, amazing herbs and spices. Turmeric, right? Turmeric has been, oh my God, the queen of herbs. Um, ashwagandha is great for your anxiety, depression, right? And then there's shatavri that I can go on and on and red clover, maca root, uh, but all these herbs are available, but now you don't want to do that, like replace the medication with all these herbs, like I said, you want to consult with someone who understands the herbs and who understands your body and understands, you know, what are the deficiencies and then replenish it with the right kind of herbs if needed. But, but these, uh, the, all these are available for women, which they should at least empower themselves or at least educate themselves, right? Right. And I think that that's, you know, getting back to perimenopause and uh, menopause and the other side of all that is to realize too that, you know, this is not, you know, entertaining, like we're not just saying, you know, take uh, two turmerics and call me in the morning type of deal. We're, we're talking about, you know, kind of like a combination of a lot of different things. Eastern culture has said this many, many, many years ago. We, it's not just the essential oil. It is not just acupuncture. It is a combination of all that. And, you know, I keep culture in mind. You talk about Eastern culture a whole lot. You know, again, I think that, you know, there's a difference between, you know, and the BIPOC and the you know, the versus white, white women. And again, this is not about, a, it's not about race per se, but there is a difference and we got to pr not pretend it's not there. Uh, can you speak a little bit about the differences also that come with that? Absolutely. It's culturally sensitive programs and uh, solutions, right? So women, uh, unfortunately, perimenopause is different for different type of women, depending on the different ethnicity. Now, just to give you an example, Latino black women, they get their menopause earlier, three or four years earlier than a white woman. Now, no, no, a normal age for menopause is 51, 52. Most of the white women get that, but the Latino and black women get it earlier and they're a little bit more obese and, and they also have more severe symptoms than an average uh, you know, woman here. Now, if you look at um, comparatively, some of the Muslim women living in South Africa, for example, they get it at mid 40s, which is actually quite alarming. And that could be because of their lifestyle, lack of movement, sedentary lifestyle, uh, all those things. And same as the behavior happening out of a country like India, um, the most of the women, they get their menopause in their mid 40s, which is again, very alarming because the early menopause, if women start getting early menopause, then that means the hormones have gone down and then risk for chronic condition increases. So the cultural sensitivity is definitely very, very important during this phase of woman's life. It's not just one pill, okay, I can take Tylenol, I can give it to all the women and it's going to, it's not going to work through that. It depends on a woman's lifestyle before um, and also their ethnic and the averages that I'm generally talking about based on the research. Now in Japanese women, um, because of their lifestyle, the soy being a very key ingredient in their food do not get uh, as severe symptoms like heart flashes as opposed to the other women that I talked about. So you can see the difference, uh, soy being one of the phytoestrogens, um, helps, uh, you know, South Asian women, spe specifically Japanese women who grow with that uh, soy in their uh, diet. So there are so many nuances in, in, in this whole journey. And the thing is that it's not like, a, you know, okay, I get a cold, I take some medication and I'm going to be fine by tomorrow. It's a, it's, it could be a seven to 10 year journey for a woman 
this whole perimenopause and and beyond that again so it's not just one thing that's going to set you it's it's you have to change your lifestyle and you know whether you like it or not if you want to navigate this journey you know with with the high quality of life is how i would put it right and i think it's also changing the mindset right because you know, if you grew up that once I may in menopause or I start having the symptoms of menopause, perimenopause, I'm no longer useful to men or I'm less attractive or what have you. You got to work on the mind and how you perceive that and that overgeneralization, the all or nothing thinking, the emotional reasoning, things like that. And I think that for me, that's why like uh, my one of my biggest takeaways from what you're saying is something that I've practiced for many, many years is that we got to think about it as the mind body spirit connection mm -hmm. and for me i tell people like if you think that my mental health treatment as a therapist will fix everything then you're you don't don't come and see me go see someone who thinks that way you need to go to a doctor you gotta get your 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 physical health in order and whether it is uh, you know i wish there was a better word in english and in, I'm, I'm my first language is french there's a word called alimentation and it's not diet, it's not about anything, but it's how you eat. Whether you're eating slow or you're eating fast, what are you eating? It's not a calorie-based idea. And that plays a huge factor in how you deal. If you're moving your body by walking or even doing, um, what's the name of it? Because I don't want to, I want to mention, I forgot the yoga therapy where you just kind of like lie down and stay still. Or if you run two marathons, it doesn't really matter as long as it fits what you want to do. And then the spirituality side, like I tell people, even if you tell me I have no spirituality, I said, that's a spiritual practice, because mm -hmm. that means you think this is all over when we're done. So therefore, you got to do the best you can while you're here. And it's really balancing all those things. And never mind the gut biome. And we can go on and on about that, too. But uh, I, I mean, is that something that you kind of bring up, too? Because it's not like you said, a seven to 10 year journey. And it's not like, oh, well, if you take turmeric, you'll be fine for the rest of your life. I mean, like turmeric would sell out right away. But do you talk about that journey also? Because it's not just physical health or, like I said, I don't like the word, but how you eat. Yes. Uh, it, it, it's a lot more than that. And for women when perimenopause, it's like also looking at, you know, how you treat your body, whether it's, you know, looking at yourself in the mirror and how you perceive yourself and the distortions that you may have. But do you bring that up to uh, women in general or...? Absolutely. Mind connection is very important. Having self-confidence, right? Because a lot of women feel uh, like what we're talking about, the physical attribute being our society kind of a gauge or, a, you know, a gauging how women uh, look is, 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 is not the right way. So, so, the, so the confidence level can go down and how you perceive yourself and then anxiety, depression. So your mind, your mind body connection the holistic health is what we are talking about is so important it only it doesn't only talk about your physical being your physical spirituality your your you know all that comes into play and that's why it's very very important for women to have that uh, mindset right the positive mindset empowering themselves and that's the problem they they think this is a way of their this is going to happen there's not they can't do anything unless they can get the hormone therapy and they need to exercise like a crazy person some of the things don't work out knowledge and and then understanding your body and and making sure you you calm your mind during this phase not have stress because stress is going to exacerbate the whole thing that we just talked about right and right. because stress is clearly linked with all the other issues uh, we know that uh, you know and the gut microbiome is directly connected with your mental health how good is your gut health is fundamental that's going to impact your gut health i mean your mental health your skin could, could be your hair so many things how you, so pro it's, it's how you process sugars stuff you know? like that yes absolutely so it's it's intertwined it's important it's not just one thing that's going to say okay this is what you do and your perimenopause menopause journey is a big <laughs> is a, you know piece of cake no 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 you have to change yourself you have to change your mindset incorporate your lifestyle learn how to take care of yourself all these things have to happen if you want if you do not want to end up having a chronic condition after 55 or beyond right and i and i think that's the good message that you give 
Um, and I really appreciate that and how to treat people differently. Obviously, like, I, you know, I appreciate what you were saying when you we, we before we got on air, you're like, it's nice to have a guy talk about this. <laughs> and I've learned a long time ago that I don't know everything and I need to be curious about stuff. And you're teaching me a whole lot. You're going to have to send me all those terms <laughs> that you use because I didn't know a whole lot about them. But I'm sure that the audience will want to have some links to that information. Uh, because I think that that's important. We we we, we got to stop thinking we know everything. I, I certainly I know what I, I'm not that smart, and in a good way, not in a bad way. We need to learn, and learning all these things is key. And you know, and then thinking about individual differences, whether it's uh, you talked, you know, obviously we're talking about women, but you know, thinking about race, thinking about mm-hmm. socioeconomic status, mm-hmm. um, you know. I think that that plays huge factors and never mind if you've been stuck in a place where maybe your sexual orientation has been something you've questioned for a long time. And sometimes you have that realization, the perimenopause, menopause phase, because you're like, fuck the world. I'm going to do whatever I want. Um, And in a good way. I mean that in the most respectful way. I like women finding themselves way before that, but you know, as much as I do, sometimes it takes that shock, so to speak, in order to get there. And it takes time, but you know, at, as we go as we as we go along here we're you know i want to start thinking about wrapping up a little bit here you talked to, i really want to hear more about you know you talked about i, I believe it's norstock yes, yes i want to hear more about that because that sounds very fascinating to me and then let let my audience know about it too yeah i mean based on all the things we talked about you know i we felt i felt a strong need underserved uh, you know that need that has been underserved People don't want to talk about sexual health. We never got to talk about that, but that again is one of the taboo subjects. So anyway, the Nourish Talk is all about culturally sensitive, holistic programs and lifestyle that we are trying to educate and empower the women. And by we are starting with a simple self-care, very affordable, less than ten dollars. We'll serve right, holistic therapies to the women, the experts. You know, different experts by, te- by maybe you have to get your testing done and also a consultation and all the therapy you know new, uh, i would talked about all the herbs the herbaceuticals the nutraceuticals that you have to take so nourish talk is empowering all that starting with a simple affordable program of self-care and then going the next step of individualized personalized holistic plan and then after that you know they want to go more in depth of analysis or some kind of a treatment. So we are trying to bridge this gap in the underserved market or underserved area of the women's life, which talk about like their sexual relationships, the sexual health can go down or so many other things. We bring all this up in a very simple, affordable way from the comfort of their home, from the privacy, from anonymity, whatever you want to talk it, we are here to help women thrive and empower during this phase of life and i think that all you talked about is very important and you know another thing that you hit on and we didn't really get to talk about is our sexual experiences and talking Mm -hmm. about it you know as a therapist you know people tell me a whole lot of different things as soon as i bring up sex whether it's men or women it becomes suddenly like the biggest taboo in the world and i'm like i didn't ask you for anything but just information and I think that opening up that conversation, because I think it's it, it's ridiculous how maybe it's the Canadian in me and my Quebec heritage, but, you know, talking about sex should not be a taboo. It should be something that we openly discuss, and that's a good thing. And I appreciate that from that program, too. How do we get to North Stock? I mean, I, is, that, is there a website? Is there social media? What's going on? Absolutely. So our website is www.nourishtalk.com. And we are on every social media, Facebook, Insta, LinkedIn. Um, You can send us an email, hello at nourishtalk.com. My name is Amita, Amita Sharma. So there are a lot of ways. And then when the app comes out in a month, uh, you know, it will be available on um, Apple as well as Google Play. And women can download it, try it out. And if, uh, you know, any feedback you want to give us, give it to us. We are here to listen and we are here to help everyone. I like that. I think that sometimes we come up with an app or we come up with a pro- program and someone says, you know, if you tweak this, no, no, we know everything. 
So I appreciate the the humbleness in regards to what you just said. I think that's what the greatest thing in the world is in life is to be humble. And I'd love to be able to promote that app whenever it comes out, put it on the, uh, on the show notes. I'll definitely put the website on the show notes too. And, um, you know, if there's a way for us to collaborate out elsewhere, like you said, it's nice to have a man to open up and talk about these things. I think it's very helpful for men to hear it too. So I have like, I want men to hear about this because, you know, she's having hot flashes. Like, yeah, that's a little more complex than just hot, hot flashes. Can you, and it's really being understanding of that. So um, nourishdoc.com, the app is going to be coming out probably, hopefully by the, even the time this is released, it will be out. And if not, we will definitely put it on the show notes as soon as I get it. And I would love to collaborate in any way you, I can. So I, I, I hope uh, I, you can think of me. I, I truly enjoyed what you talked about. You're right in my wheelhouse about seeing the holistic approach, uh, talking about differences within women too, and more importantly, Eastern culture. To me, as a person who is always willing to learn, it's very important. And then the Buddhist in me says, please understand, you got to know nothing, Steve, in life. So you, you got to make sure that you learn, keep on learning. So I, I appreciate your time, uh, Amita, Sharma. I, I thank you. And let's stay in touch, please. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate that. Well, this concludes episode 137. Amita Sharma, thank you so much for coming. It was a great interview. And um, I hope you guys get a lot from it. Nor stock is something you should look up and uh, please do so as quickly as you can. But episode 138 will be also someone coming back from an episode 121. Jenny Elms Calvin, she will be back. Uh, had a great time when we last spoke um, and I definitely wanted to have her back. So she will be here at the next episode. So join us then. Please like, subscribe and follow this podcast on your favorite platform. A glowing review is always helpful. And as a reminder... This podcast is for informational, educational, and entertainment purposes only. If you're struggling with a mental health or substance abuse issue, please reach out to a professional counselor for consultation. If you are in a mental health crisis, call 988 for assistance. This number is available in the United States.